Hey guys, what's up? Irish Emerald here, coach of your Wexford Wailers, and welcome to our semi final team building video for you guys this week, where we're going up against Semi, coach of the Montreal Monfernos. And this is not going to be a very easy task at all if we want to be able to make it to the finals in the MPL. Um, Semi is an incredibly tough opponent. He went on an absolute tear in the regular season, going 8 and 1. I think he had over 30 plus, uh, or over 30 uh, positive diff. Uh, in the course of that run. Um, but luckily we were the only team that managed to beat him in the regular season. So um, there's good and bad to that. The good is that we know we can beat him. The bad is that he is going to be 100% laser focused on us because he's been itching. And I know for a fact because I've been talking to him. He's been itching for a rematch against us. So I'm... Um, I mean, can't wait to battle because it's going to be an awesome battle. But at the same time, I know it's going to be an incredibly tough battle because he's going to be bringing the absolute fire against us in order to be able to beat us uh, this week. Um, his team, as you can see by me now, consists of Lando T, which is the Z captain, Mega Kangaskhan, which is which is non seismic toss, so he can't just he can't carry that. Tabafini, Volcarona, Weavile, Ferrothorn, Reuniclus, Swampert, Weezing, Raichu, and McChuck, which is another one of his Z, of his Z captains. He's made a good few changes since um, since we battled him in week three. So have we, uh, of course. But uh, he's made a good few changes. Notably, he's upgraded Sneasel to Weavile, which was an absolute nightmare for us to deal with. Uh, he's upgraded Wob Effect to Reuniclus, which is going to be a bit of a hassle. And he's changed. Uh, he's brought in um, Machoke as well, and a couple of other like lower tier changes. But the big, definitely the big improvements have been Reuniclus and Weavile. Um, so obviously he's got threats across the board now because of it. Uh, Lado T speaks of itself. Mega Kangaskhan can obviously set up very easily with Power Punch. That could be a threat. Tabu Fidi uh, could just be annoying with the Mystic Train and what have you. Weavile, as we said in week one in the MPL, Weavile can run over my team. So uh, if we see Weavile coming, we're going to have to leave our Mega Aggron to get the filter up because that's the only answer we have to Weavile. Ferrothorn obviously is very annoying because it's set up hazards and what have you. Reuniclus is a nightmare to absolutely deal with because Reuniclus can run so many different support sets, so many offensive sets, so many defensive sets. It's going to be very, very difficult to kind of try and suss it out, beat it and um, try and break through it because I can wall things. It can be designed to wall any particular mod in the format in my opinion. Maybe not Ashgren, so I'm not too sure if he brings it, but if he sees a weakness, he's going to uh, that Reuniclus capacity to bring it. Swamper, Weezing and you know, a few other bits and pieces, but threats across the board there. Um, and it's not going to be an easy matchup. He's got um he's got a team that is actually very difficult to set up on. So we're not going to be looking to set up this week at all. We're going to be looking to eventually just wear him down with chip because, a bit like myself, uh, Baron Reuniclus, his team was kind of very much leaning towards um a more offensive kind of build. I know you're kind of saying he's got Ferrothorn, but he gets Hazard stack with Ferrothorn. But Reuniclus is kind of the only real one that can kind of really be annoying when it comes to actually being bulky and stally and defensive. Um, so I think like the two like between both of us. Um, we're not going to be looking to maybe or like there's not too many opportunities for either team to be able to set up unless we are really behind behind or really not up to scratch on our game plan but anyways we're going to talk about the team we're bringing first things first we're bringing Thorn our Raikou this week with the choice specs very similar to our week 3 set that when we face Sebi with Thunderbolt Aurasphere Hidden Power Ice and Full Switch Rash Nature because unfortunately we need it for the Aurasphere uh, with 252 a special attack 252 speed um, I don't want to see why we have the four. Well, I suppose well, I would put the four in defense. I uh, know we put the four in split F in case in case of all Corona, unfortunately. But um, this is kind of set we're running with, and the reason why we're running with this, you could argue Irish, you need the speed for his team. Uh, you could argue that um, I'll talk about the speed here for a brief moment. So with Rash Nature, unfortunately, we do not outspeed base 100s. We speed tie with base 99s, and the two base 100s he has is Mega Kangaskhan. And the Volcarona. Now, Volcarona could be a bit of an issue um, for obvious reasons because it can sit up and it can cause a lot, a lot of trouble like that. But Mega Kangaskhan might not be too big of an issue having to try and deal with that um, if we're trying to 1v1 it because potentially if Mega Kangaskhan comes, it could be a wish support set like we saw before. And if it's an offensive variant, like we're not really going to be staying in with Raikou when Mega Kangaskhan comes in, we're going to be looking to switch out most of the time. So, um, uh, like either matchup, we're not exactly relying on Raikou to kind of stay in. We're kind of relying on Raikou to come in, get big hit, come back out again with full switch and what have you. Because Odin and Swampert has got a grass immunity, so that's the idea behind that. Um, so we're rocking our choice back so we can hit as hard as possibly can. This will allow us to actually break through Tapafini, which is one of his major walls. And Aura Sphere can cover Ferrothorn and Mega Kangaskhan and Weavile very, very nicely. Um, so Thunderbolt and Aura Sphere, as I said, Hidden Power Ice for the Lando T. We could have rocked out with Hidden Power Grass, but we... 
I felt this week that Lando T could be a bigger issue. So we went with Hidden Power Ice this week. And we're rocking out votes with just to kind of spam it once Ferrothorn and Lando T are dealt with so that we can just kind of beat it. And that's the idea behind it. After that, we're bringing Victory Arvitini with the Expert Belt, rocking our V-Create, Bow Strike, Substitute and Energy Ball. Um, last time around when we played Sevi, we had the Assault Vest. I'm abandoning the Assault Vest set this week. Uh, this time around, it was built to mainly deal with Quiver Dance for Corona. It did that that time, but unfortunately, I'm pretty sure it's going to be prepped for that. So we're not going to be able to bring it again. We have to bring up some different variant of it, and this VT set is going to be just that. Um, the, what's it called? the idea here is, is that we're, uh, here is that we're going to be able to probably beat anything. Realistically, we're going to be able to shot anything on this team with Victini. It's fantastic. Um, so, uh, especially with the coverage we have. Um, we're, we're going to be able to bring in Victini on several different ones that it's actually going to be able to force out or scare out a lot of the time. So, um, one idea he, that he could have is like he could use Lando T's appearance into Victini if it's fully fist death with Intimidate. He could have that. Um, you know, he doesn't have too many answers for me. He could bring Runiclist. That could be an, another option, but Runiclist isn't exactly the best option to kind of try and beat me with because we create a two shot so that's very very nice um and you kind of we kind of force an awful lot of situations so the idea is we can bring this in on a ferrothorn or something like that or a corona we can set up a substitute we can go for we can then go for v create and we can bop something or when he if he goes for a switching all right okay we're behind a substitute he brought in let's say Swamper, which could be a, a realistically that could be a very very much a bring against me to actually wall this Victini. I can then click energy ball without the fear of having to worry about Rindo Perry and we're guaranteed to a KO then on the Swamper, which is fantastic. So um that's the idea behind Victini. We're gonna be able to create space, we're definitely gonna create space to match up to get set up substitutes and then with our coverage we can hit anything on this team and that's absolutely fantastic. Next week uh, next up we're bring our Maldo. Um I haven't come up with a name for Armaldo. I cannot remember what I used to call it. Uh, so I'm for I will try and come up with something, <laughs> something unfortunately. But Armaldo is going to be coming this week. I'm going to say, um, I'm just going to. Uh, what do I call Armaldo? A bit late in the season to be trying to nickname a Pokemon here, Irish. Um, uh, it is the armor Pokemon. Um, I, I might call it. Uh, I don't know. Rock plate, maybe. Oh, okay, rock plate. Oh, I don't know. Rock plate. Okay. Fine, Rock Pit it is. Rock Pit, dear yeah, Armando, is going to be coming this week. With Rapid Spin, Rock Slide, Super Powered Aqua Jet, 152 in Spadef with the Assault Vest, 104 in Attack, and 252 in HP. The idea behind this set is this is going to be our Volcarona answer. Now, obviously, if Rocks come in, uh, and he does get easy Rocks against us with Swampert and Ferrothorn, but um, if he if he's going for the, like, the Rocks kind of uh, shenanigans, um, Armalo is going to be a hazard removal to stop hazard stacking against us. And um, with the, uh, so that's the reason why we have to bring this. And then with the spread that we have with Assault Vest and the Spadef investment, we will be able to kind of deal with Volcrona. Uh, we'll be able to come in on Volcrona as it goes for Quiver Dance, if, even if Rocks are up, be able to take one Fire Blast, land a Rock Slide, or call it, job, job done. Volcrona is, uh, is under pressure then, and that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, then we have a superpower to be able to kind of want, uh, to try and uh, to kill the. Uh, Ferrothorn, uh, not like a, um, a Spadef Ferrothorn, so that'd be very, very nice if we could manage to do that. Um, but of course, we might need a little bit of chip on Ferrothorn, so if we can get Ferrothorn down to maybe 70% and if we predict Ferrothorn to come in, we can go for Superpower and knock it out with two shots. And then I have Aqua Jet just on the off chance that Volcrona is kind of in, and I need to get pivotal damage on Volcrona, and I'm not too sure what he's going to do. Uh, or, or he's got a couple of QDs up, and I'm not healthy enough to be able to beat it. I can just go for Aqua Jet and get reliable damage off on it. Uh, so that's the idea. Um, as I said, the spread allows me to live a plus one, uh, quiver, a plus one special attack in Fire Blast, um, and the attack investment allows me to potentially two shot Ferrothorn with superpower, and that's the idea. All right, and that's with two superpowers. That's including the attack drop. Okay, next up, guys, we have Sylvie, our Sylveon holding leftovers with Hyper Voice, Wish, Baton Pass, and Hidden Power Rock. Uh, two for four in HP, two twelve in Spadef with the uh, with fifty two in special attack. We have the Spadef investment to potentially deal with Volcrona, and you could definitely tell Volcrona is a big threat for me. This also is like my main switching to a lot of special Pokemon. So if you look at his team, like Swampers potentially going to be carrying Scald, Scald EQ or something like that. Uh, then he's got Volcrona, Tapafini, reliable um, special attackers there. And my and the idea is that we'd be able to kind of come in on those hits and be able to kind of do work against it. 
Um, so we have Hyper Force as our main stab. Then we have Wish to be able to kind of pivot around and keep HP healthy. But Tom passes for momentum because a lot of the time, if he's going to be bringing in a uh, Pokemon, uh, it's going to be Ferrothorn as the answer to Sylveon because it is probably be death invested. It would be able to hit Power Fires uh, and whatnot, and it would be able to kind of beat my Sylveon, which is not a, which is not good whatsoever. But if I can start predicting that, and because I'm very slow, I'm going to get initiative. I'm going to be able to keep the pressure on Sebi the whole time by potentially bringing in Victini on a Ferrothorn, and then I could go for a sub or a recreate if I'm feeling uh, it depending on what he sees to be honest uh, once he sees subs sub once we might have to just go for the attack the second time because he knows that he knows we're looking for subs and he can potentially get free 25% off on Victini because we went for a substitute so gotta keep that in mind um, but we have Wish Patan Pass Hidden Power Voice and then Hidden Power Rock because it, we need a second answer to Volcarona, and this is our second answer to Volcarona. If it starts setting up on us, we have Hidden Power Rock to be able to OCO this thing, uh, if, um, and we have enough investment to be able to live uh, Quiver Dance Volcarona as well. So having Sylveon to be able to kind of deal with that as a second answer is very, very nice indeed, and hopefully it will be able to do the work with by pivoting in and out the whole time. All right, after that, guys, we're bringing Colossus and Mega Aggron with Roar, Heavy Slam, Fire Punch, and Rock Slide. The spread. If you guys have looked back at our week 3 battle, it's the exact same as before. We're running 252 HP for max, for max HP. We have enough attack investment to 2 AKO Ferrothorn with Fire Punch. Uh, we have enough speed up investment for us to be able to live 1 plus, um, Fire Blast from a Volcarona if we come in on rocks. That, uh, so that, and if we're at full HP, so that's ideal. And then the rest is in Fizz Death. So very, very similar to last, uh, the last time around. It worked the last time. Uh, so I saw no reason to change it because I definitely need Mega Aggron to be able to deal with Weavile. So, that's, so if we have to bring Aggron, we might as well bring the effective set, the effective bulky set that we had the last time. No step rock this week because I'm bringing on Charm, so I decided to go for Roar. And Roar can be very pivotal for us because if we're coming in on Reuniclus, and Reuniclus is a double dancing set with Magic Guard, we need to be able to roar it out so it cannot be setting um, Acid Armors and Calm Minds on us because that would be an absolute nightmare. Uh, then we got Heavy Slam to, as our main stab move, uh, Fire Punch for the Ferrothorn and Rock Slide in the off chance we're up against the Volcarona, on the off chance. Uh, if Volcarona comes in on us and we don't have the, our, our Maldo or Sylveon left, we need to be able to hit it with a, we need to be able to hit it with Rock Slide so it doesn't get fully set up. So that's the idea behind Agron like that. And last one, ladies and gentlemen, we have Charmed our Mesprit here. Uh, rocking out a Steph Rock U-Turn, Fire Punch and Ice Beam. Rocking out a full Fizz Death here because I have a lot of Spadef investment here. With my mon, so I decided uh, we bring this spread fully for Steph here to be able to kind of sponge hits, particularly from Lando T, because I was becoming very EQ weak. So I needed uh, an immunity to earthquake spam, and this is going to be our answer for it. Um, so we're rocking out Stealth Rock, U turn, Fire Punch, and Ice Beam. You could kind of pretty much figure out what the um, investment there is for Stealth Rock is just get rocks up, U turn is just pivot around, Fire Punch is Ferrothorn, Ice Beams for Lando T, and with that kind of coverage, we should be okay to kind of be able to do an awful lot of work. I'm going to relax nature because I didn't because uh, I felt that um, if, what's it called we don't lose anything by being relaxed because uh, an awful lot of Pokemon that he has he's got big big speed uh, speed gap between like eighty and sixty so uh, so like because uh, like the next fast Pokemon we could always be is potentially Tapu Um I didn't see the point in trying to create a speed creep that just with Mesper I didn't see any adva advantage to it. And then below Tapu Fini, he's got Weezy and Swampert at 60 speed. And, and even with the relaxed nature, um, we're going to outspeed 60 base Pokemon. Um, so I figured what, we might as well just run relax so that we you know we're not you know going to you know reduce the damage that U-Turn, Fire Punch or Ice Beam would put out by having uh, an attack or a special attack negative nature in either one of those slots. So that was the idea behind that and hopefully it will do the job nicely. And we will be guaranteed to get slow U turns off on one or two months and give us momentum. Uh it's gonna be a tough match you guys and it's gonna be very important we keep we get momentum and we keep momentum constantly throughout this match. Um if we can do that we're gonna be able to keep Sebi Sebi under an enormous amount of pressure because uh definitely Sebi is the kind of battler that if he gets pressure on you it's very hard to wrestle back from so you, we need to be able to put pressure on him very quickly very early and not allow him to be able to do uh, funky stuff to us. And if we can manage that, we're going to be in really good shape. And hopefully we can do just that. Uh, is there anything else I would like to go through? No, I think that's it. 
Hopefully we can pick up the W again, guys. Um, it's going to be a great battle. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I'm pumped for this one. This should be really good. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here today. Uh, definitely go check out Sebi's channel. A link to his channel is going to be in the description down below. Along with all the other, MP with all the other MPL coaches that have participated this season. Um, if, you got, if you guys enjoyed today's video, click like button down below for me. I think I said that. I can't remember. If you guys got any comments on today's video, whether it be good, bad or different, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below if you have any thoughts on the team, all that kind of good stuff. And ask my if you want to see more uh, Wexler Wheeler or Action Quinn on this channel or more content in general, please smash that subscribe button down below for me and click that bell icon. And that note, I'm going to get up out of here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.